How are we doing, people? Back again with another study. This one has come by request from Ben, so shout out to you, Ben. Um, before I get started properly into the video, I want to say that this video is protected under the Fair Use Act. It's an educational video, and I acknowledge that the credit for the original clip goes to the rightful owners, which are Showtime Sports, as we can see here. Um, so, yep, Ben, shout out to you for making this request. I hope this video is entertaining and insightful. Just a disclaimer, I haven't gone through this fight many times with a fine tooth comb uh, for one reason, and it is that I just, I can't handle seeing Mike Tyson lose, even after all these years. Obviously, I'm joking. I'm not a demented Tyson fanboy. The reason why I don't like this fight, it's just, it, it falls into a pattern very early on of not the highest quality boxing and just like there's a lot of holding a lot of wrestling but not not productive wrestling not like the kind of inside fighting you see again uh in like roberto duran fights it's just a lot of dull wrestling but nevertheless there are some some good things that we can look at in this fight um rather than have individual clips i've actually made some notes and i've got the the times down on them uh, once again, the speed is marginally uh, slowed down just to accommodate our assessment. I'll be pausing, uh, going frame by frame, all that stuff. And so, yeah, Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. Let's get into it. So my first, the first point I want to make is if we go with the, the fight's about to start. So in the beginning of round one, and if we both guys come to the ring, and let's look how Tyson starts his engagement. He's flashing the lead hand, as we're about to see, and what that does is load his weight onto the back leg. So you can see that he's trying to threaten with the lead hand and go into a right hand. Holyfield is getting ready for that, has his parry ready using his rear hand. Uh, Tyson seems to get him fairly good, catches him early. So you can see that was a very successful uh, engagement for Tyson. It's early, he's sharp, and he's just come right out and managed to catch Holyfield and send him reeling into the ropes. And so what we're going to do now is there's going to be a lot of me jumping around specific times. So this is now later in the round. This is six minutes in to the total video. And what we can see here is when they go into a similar engagement, Tyson goes into that same position, the same position that he was in the beginning of the round. So he's flashing that lead hand, loading up the right side. But what does Holyfield do? Once again, he has the parry ready, but he understands now that there is more to this engagement than you initially see. So he neutralizes that lead hand from Tyson, but he doesn't just stop there. And he doesn't just return fire, knowing that he's still in the line of this uh, potential right hand from Tyson. So what he does is he then goes to control Tyson's head here. And so this doesn't seem like much because uh, practically, um, well, it isn't. You know, it's not really a punch. If Tyson, if his head goes into this, there's no damage, not at all. But that's that's not what the point is. Champions must control their opponents. You never allow yourself to take to take return fire. That's just non-negotiable. Because if you do, then boxing simply turns into a a matter of you hit me, I hit you back. I hit you, you hit me back. We don't allow that. We hit our opponents and we don't allow them to hit us back. And to do that, we must manipulate our opponents. So Holyfield neutralizes that, that lead hand, controls the head of Tyson, back out of range, and he gets out of that engagement safely. Even though he didn't land any of his own offense, he didn't have to take any. And what this does is it sets the tone for the rest of the fight. Let me just get my notes up. So that's a good, a good engagement and some good understanding from Holyfield. So now if we go to slightly forward go to 636 and so we're going to see here how good Evander Holyfield's eyes are 
Okay, so what we see here, they're about to be begin an engagement. Tyson loads his weight onto the, uh, the lead leg. So that means the left side, his left arm, any punch that comes from there is now loaded. Holyfield sees this and what does he do? He gets in position to successfully block that left hook. So Holyfield knows what Tyson's going to do before Tyson's even done it. And this is why you need to add layers to your offense. You need to use lighter shots, you need to use feints, you need to bluff your way until you have your opponent in correct position. You can't just walk up and start an engagement and start charging your punch up, punches up like Tyson does. But what does he do? He does just that. As we saw, frames before Tyson had even let that punch go, Holyfield already had that punch. Um, he already had that punch sussed. But it's not all good for Holyfield because we see that he counters or attempts to counter. Um, it's like Tyson left hook, Holyfield left hook, but Tyson right hand. And so that is... Um, it's not bad it's not bad but the lack of articulation and the lack of proper weight transfer in Holyfield's technique means that he stays on that front foot and he doesn't move out of this zone because Holyfield's head through throwing the left hook should be here his weight should be over or like in this area here where it's, it's not it's quite centralized slash on the front which means he's still in that danger zone of where uh, Tyson's targeting and we'll get a better angle of this. And we can see that Holyfield started off well, but do, just to, due to poor weight management and poor technique, for whatever reason, he ends up taking the punch, even though he started that engagement quite well. If we go to 755, which I believe is the slow mo. can see he's in the corner and here we'll see it so Tyson loads up we see Holyfield straight away he knows to block from that side and people might think oh it's because it's because Mike Tyson has such a good left hook and he's so famous for his left hook well yeah that plays a part to some degree but it's because Holyfield's using his eyes he's engaging his brain and he knows from experience from up boxing understanding that this is now the dangerous side the left side in terms of the power it generates if Tyson was more intelligent, he'd use the right hand to set up and he'd use these more fast, direct, lighter shots to then see if he can manipulate uh, Holyfield more in condition uh, or, how can I say, cultivate the right conditions to then throw a power punch with the, the left hand. But he doesn't do that. We see Holyfield easily times it, but look at this, this weight transfer. He uses a lot of the stretch reflex in the shoulder, in the chest, in the bicep, but he doesn't truly turn his weight over. You can see his, his, uh, his front leg, his left leg is, is raising off the ground, but he's spinning in place and he stays exactly where he is and ships that punch. So this is why you need to have proper punching mechanics to be an effective, powerful puncher, but also to keep yourself safe. So yeah, that's an example of a poor weight transition from Holyfield. If we go to 8.42. Sorry, yeah, there we go. Right. So, um, this in is, is an example of why you need to set up your punches. So Tyson has just launched this right hand. Virtually no setup. He's literally gone from stationary, step forward into the engagement and just launched his right hand. Very amateurish, but it's what he's attempted to do. And even the great Mike Tyson, as explosive and quick and destructive a puncher as he is, also accurate as well. People, a lot of people um, underestimate how accurate Mike Tyson was. But all these, all these, uh, these skills and this ability that Tyson has, even he can't get away with just trying to throw punches without setting them up. Because what happens, he's throwing that right hand and he gets countered. And that's a hard counter because he moved in to the trajectory of that uppercut. Luckily, Mike Tyson's got good chin because, um, 
go back to uh, Jamel Charlo versus one of the Charlos versus Ericsson Lubin. I can't remember which one he fought. Um, Lubin, remember, he ducks into like that right uppercut and he doubles the impact and he's flattened after that. Completely done. So Mike Tyson got a hell of a chin. But it just goes to show that no matter how great you are, how much how good an athlete you are, you have to set up your punches. Even the great Mike Tyson. Uh, 8.54. Let it play through. So... This is going to be some more head control paired with the parry. So coming into the engagement now, we can see uh, Holyfield parry in the jab. Oh, what does he do? What does he do? Parries the jab, controls the head again. Is Tyson going to land? Of course he isn't. Where the head goes, the body follows. So if you bear that in mind and you physically alter, you physically manipulate your opponent, don't underestimate it. It's yeah, it's just a glove on the head, but if you stiff arm someone or you push their head, their body will follow. If their body is busy following where their head is being pushed, that takes away a lot of the leverage and the weight. You're you're manipulating your opponent's best asset. You're you're not let me slow down. Your opponent in boxing, your best asset is your weight. Because that is what allows you to get power in your punches. Every athlete in every sport has to control their weight. And that's why you typically see across the board athletes with the best control of their own bodies, the best control of their biomechanics, they're typically the most successful. So if you physically control that massive asset, that main asset of your opponent, you're in business. Because you have complete control over where they can go, where they can't go, what they can do, what they can't do. And from there, you can start to tailor your attack and really exploit them because you know where you're going. Um, what's, the, what's the saying? The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. There we go. That's it. Boxing is no different. And so we see that um, Holyfield is doing that. He's really getting into the habit. He's clearly drilled it, neutralized the, the lead hand, control the head. So uh, let's see that again in real time. I'll just let this one play through because I'm stopping this a lot. Tyson comes in very basic, just like that. So even though Tyson wound up that massive, powerful right hand, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because he's being controlled. So uh, go to 10 minute mark. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get as precise as I can. There we go. So once again, neutralize the, the lead hand. Just play again. See Tyson Tyson is a cerebral fighter. You can see that in, in his prime, you know, to carry on the meme, prime Tyson. But Mike Tyson here is showing that. No matter how good you are, if you stop engaging your boxing IQ and exercising it, you'll lose it and you will lose the fight you're in. Sometimes you may be able to just brute force your way, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And um, he's just trying to come in with these, these hard jabs, these stepping jabs, easily timed with uh, Holyfield's parry. And what's happened here? Oh, still too early, but that, that was the wrong engagement, but you still get the idea. Holyfield just has the timing down on that on that jab. Not because Holyfield has amazing reflexes. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he's trained very well for this fight, but it's because Tyson's not really making it that difficult. There's no bluffing. And at the end of the day, boxing is about bluffing. Fake it till you make it. So start the engagement. Holyfield has it ready. And... He's kind of like, he's preempted it, and that's just kept Tyson in his shell. And then Tyson tried to go for it anyway. Head control once again. Not only controlling Tyson's head and where his weight can go, but physically blinding him as well. You try for a punch on a moving target when a glove's in your face. 
try it. Try it and film it and then send me the results. And we can see the result of that. Tyson misses. Holyfield once again, he's, he's trying to physically stop Tyson from being able to articulate himself and generate power in either side. Completely got complete control of him. I um, think I'm just going to let play through from here because I have a couple of points. Um, we can see there's like a little exchange here. And let's watch it through. Control, there we go. Controls him again. It's constantly controlling the space and Tyson himself. See that he parried, punched with the same hand. That's a good trick. Uh, a trick. It's a good maneuver. I always really like that because you can take, you can neutralize that jab, punch over it with like a, a more direct faint, no, more direct probe of your own, and then that powers up the left side, say, and you can work from there. We can see that. Uh, Holyfield in that clinch was physically trying to hold Tyson where he was. Hold him, launch the shot, but he misses. What does he do? He doesn't just bring his hand back. He physically stays in contact with Tyson, controlling where Tyson can and can't go. And that's what he can and can't do. Once again, kind of bodied up with Tyson. See him pinning his glove on. He breaks away, gets a bit more space. So what does he do? Stiff arms him, pushes Tyson back. Not only pushing him back, to control where his weight is, but changes his location in the ring. Tyson's, how many times have you seen Tyson backed up against the ropes? It's not often. This fight, I think the Peter McNeely and Buster Mavis fights prior to this, but other than that, you don't really see Tyson against the ropes much. But Holyfield knows, he understands how to, how to physically control his opponent. We can see, ready to neutralize the lead hand while physically neutralizing or engaging Tyson's guard. Kind of ships a little bit there. You'd like to see Holyfield come off the, the center line a little bit. Controlling again. Come off the center line. That's why. Because even then opponent just kind of go for it and may catch you over the over the lead hand. But we can see more control. So Holyfield ships and punishment. You're not going to do that again. So you, you can't see his arm because it's past Tyson's, but he's physically, he's got his hands on, on Tyson engaging the left hand by the looks of it. Engage again, neutralizing the lead hand. Not the best left hook, the me mechanics of uh, Holyfield a little bit off. Sends that uppercut into him again because he's managed to usher uh, Tyson to the left side. Another left hook, not the greatest. What's Holyfield going to do? Oh, brings it round. Holds Tyson where he is. Oh, there we go. Bang. Holds him where he is. Loads up the left. And Tyson's getting beaten up at this point. He's getting roughed up. And then he's just trying to go off on him. See, Tyson knows as well. There was Tyson threw that left hand, uh, that right hand. Missed. Kept his hand on uh, Holyfield's shoulder. But I just don't think Tyson, he hasn't practiced his game to the same extent. And so he's kind of coming off second best, even though he he knows what he wants to do. Okay, we see some, some wrestling here. Let me just skip forward to the last couple of points I've got. This is a long one guys appreciate if you stay with me okay so we can see here that both guys are kind of going for each other with a lead hand i think what we can see here is um holyfield's doing a better job of neutralizing the return fire tyson it looks like he's trying to but he's just misjudged it he's shipped that punch this is a good weight transfer or, or a better weight transfer from Holyfield because look, with the left hook, he was stuck in this position here. He hadn't properly articulated his weight and changed his position to the back foot. So we can see uh, that was on the left hook. Now using this kind of jab slash left cross kind of thing, he looks like he's in pole position to get smashed by Mike Tyson right hand. 
but because he actually brings his weight backwards, look at that. That's how easy it is. When you're mindful of your positioning and what you're at risk of getting hit by, you can learn to create the exit route. And that's precisely what Holyfield has done. And he gets away scot-free. So he landed a good, powerful lead hand and avoided the counter using good technique. That's it. Good technique, positional awareness and understanding, and you're golden. Boxing is a positional battle, guys. Remember that. And we'll go to the last little clip I've got noted down. Okay, so clearly a break. Set up your punches again. Just the, yeah, that was kind of the same as the clip at like the eight minute 42 mark. Um, gone back a little bit too far. But you get the idea now. I'm kind of bringing this video to a close. It's longer than I expected it to be. Only the first three rounds. Um, let's just watch this clip. So even the great Mike Tyson steps in with his jab. At the highest level, these single layers aren't enough. You get told in boxing gyms all across the world, amateur and pro, set it up with a jab, set it up with a jab. Well, look, Mike Tyson's setting it up with a jab. But it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Because, look, he gets countered. So... That means that you can, there's something wrong, or maybe not wrong, but there's something missing. It's not just as simple as, oh, as long as you start every engagement with the jab, you're going to have success. It doesn't work like that, especially at the highest level. And at the end of the day, regardless of what level you are now, you should be preparing for your opponents at the highest level. Don't practice beating up the guy who doesn't know how to fight. Bear in mind and always be mindful, prepare yourself accordingly to fight the best and slowly but surely you'll get better and better and better. Don't be good. Forget about being good. Be better. That's my message to you in this. So yeah, 22 and a half minutes in, I greatly appreciate if you stuck by me this whole entire video, longer than I expected as I say. Um, Ben, I hope you like this video. I hope it's enjoyable, insightful. I hope people learn something from this and they're able to add it to their game. And also, I hope that this helps you to have a greater appreciation of boxing, the subtleties and the science and the art form that goes into it and being an elite fighter, or at least trying to be. So, um, also, Tyson fanboys, don't hate on me. It was by request. <laughs> It's not my fault Tyson got beat up by Holyfield. you got to get good. Um, if you can like, share this video, comment under this video, let's discuss it. Let me know what you think. Send it far and wide to anyone who you think might enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel, press the notification bell. All that good stuff helps me out, helps the channel out, and we develop this community. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next video.